la cinquième école de cristallographie, la cinquième école marocaine de cristallographie. Donc j'ai le plaisir de modérer la première conférence donc, qui va être présentée par le professeur Michel Zema, qui est le représentant ici. Donc nous avons l'honneur d'accueillir parmi nous. Donc c'est le représentant de l'Union internationale de cristallographie. Donc c'est un professeur à l'université de Pavia en Italie où il enseigne la cristallographie et la minéralogie. Donc et également c'est le président de l'association des enseignants de cristallographie Italie. Et actuellement c'est le manager du projet de l'année internationale de cristallographie qui est planifiée durant l'année 2014. Donc, let me introduce the, the conference in English. Mr. Michel Zima is the representative of the International Union of Crystallography. He is a lecturer in the University of Pavia in Italy. He is the chair of the Commission on in Teaching Crystallography in the Italian Crystallographic Association. Actually, he is the project manager of the International Year of Crystallography. The talk of Mr. Michel Zema will be about the scientific event planning during the next year, 2014. You have to talk. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for this very kind introduction. Do you think I might need a microphone? Or it's loud enough to talk without? No, okay. I need a microphone, that's fine. So, okay, thanks again for this very kind introduction. And let me start thanking the organizers of this uh, school, of the fifth uh, Moroccan crystallography school, for inviting me to give this uh, introductory talk about the International Year of Crystallography. And in particular, not specifically for inviting me, but for inviting the International Year of Crystallography and for giving this visibility and uh, um, emphasis to the fact that we are approaching a very special moment for all crystallographers and for crystallography as a discipline, uh, except for this, for the International Year of Crystallography that has been proclaimed for uh, 2014. So, uh, I just want to start showing you the official logo of the International Year of Crystallography just to point out that embedded in the same picture you may notice the presence of the, the logo of UNESCO and the logo of the International Union of Crystallography. So this is to make it clear that the coordinators of all the events for the International Year of Crystallography are jointly done by UNESCO and the International Union of Crystallography. So of course the IUCR is in charge of all the scientific parts, so in a sense is the depository of the crystallographic knowledge and it uh, associates all the crystallographic associations from all over the world. So, uh, the IUCR will, take in will be in charge of all the scientific events and of course the support of UNESCO is uh, mostly important for what con concern the involvement of the governments because of course this will be an event uh, which will be spread worldwide. Okay, so um, just a, a preamble uh, for those of I, I hope that all of you know about the International Year of Crystallography. So I just want to um, remind something. Um, this was proclaimed by the United Nations in July 2012. And uh, uh, this proclamation, I don't want you to read all these, but just to show you that there are a number of uh, um, reasons why the United Nations decided to proclaim 2014 as International Year of Crystallography. And in particular, I highlighted uh, one sentence considering the impact of crystallography in everywhere in our daily lives. Crystallography is fundamental for the advancement of science, of all the disciplines of science biology, chemistry, physics, mineralogy, they are all based on the background that crystallography can give. So we all should be proud of being part of this community, of being part of this discipline. And this is what the United Nations pointed out, the importance of crystallography for the development of science. 
And um, so um, I, you can easily find this documentation on the website of the International Year Crystallography or the United Nations, and uh, I can give you more details later on. So I'm not going into details about this list of reasons, but maybe you already catched or spotted some of the points. Uh, what are the objectives? Uh, well, if you go outside and ask the people what crystallography is, I'm sure that in most cases they will not answer a good, uh, 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 they will not give a good answer because there is no awareness of what crystallography is as a science in the public. So one of the main objectives of the International Year of Crystallography will be to increase the awareness in the public what is crystallography? People should be aware that it is a science, that it is something which uh, found all the uh, other disciplines, which is a basic knowledge for, uh, for all science. So we also want to show that uh, what uh, we mean with universality of science, uh, so without borders. Uh, so crystallography is a perfect example because it's spread uh, in all over the sciences. So it's a perfect example to show the universality of science. Of course, increasing public awareness, you cannot but start with the youngsters. So uh, inspiring the young people, the students, is the first aim because this is the starting point for the new generation. So special projects for inspiring the youngsters and for uh, instructing them about crystallography will be one of the main objectives of the International Year of Crystallography. Then, going more specifically, uh, you know the International Union of Crystallography has a... Um, special project which is called Crystallography in Africa, or Initiative in Africa, which has been lasting for many years now, since 1999, and this will be intensified, so there will be special projects in Africa, and this will be also implemented in Latin America and Southeast Asia in particular. And of course, we would like to um, uh, encourage people to start international collaboration, cooperations among countries. So this is what we can do this year, because this is the International Year of Crystallography, and this is a special moment when we have visibility for our discipline in the governments, in the public. So we can raise uh, a lot of visibility thanks to, to this logo, to the fact that the United Nations uh, give this special emphasis to crystallography this year. So we cannot miss this special moment. This is my first message, I have to say. Um, okay, um, let me also uh, start with a... Um, what was the role of Morocco? We are here in Saidia and it's a very, uh, it's a great pleasure to give this talk here in Morocco because if we have the International Year of Crystallography, it, it is mostly because of uh, the, the work that has been done by the Moroccan Crystallographic Association. So I don't want to give you all the details, which was a very long story and a beautiful story, because I think that Professor Abdelmalek Talal can uh, uh, give you much more details than, uh, than I can. So I just used some uh, materials that uh, very kindly provided uh, me. Uh, so I ju just to tell you that everything started um, during the first North, uh, North African conference in crystallography in Casablanca in 1210. Uh, so it's quite a long time ago when the former president of the IUCR uh, announced that the IUCR wanted to uh, invite the United Nations in considering the possibility of uh, proclaiming 2013 as the International Year of Crystallography. So the idea was to have 2013 as International Year of Crystallography. And also, Sine Larsen uh, invited Morocco to be the responsible of all the procedures for um, uh, preparing the resolution for the United Nations because of the strong tradition in crystallography that Morocco has, because of the uh, very well established uh, crystallographic association in Morocco, which was founded in 2002. So uh, this was a very special for Morocco, which was undertaken and was very successful, so we are all very grateful uh, for this work. And I just tried to summarize some of the steps that uh, were done, 
and probably they are not all, but just to say that uh, there was a first attempt to have the International Year proclaimed through UNESCO, which is a way for uh, having the International Years proclaimed by the uh, United Nations, which was not f successful because of the timing. It was too uh, early. So it was decided to uh, postpone the International Year to 2014, and in this case it was successful, but a diff with a different strategy, because what the Moroccan Crystallographic Association had to do uh, uh, was to go directly to, to the United Nations without passing through UNESCO. Uh, so the Moroccan Crystallographic Association prepared all the resolution, which is a huge work for convincing all the governments how, uh, why crystallography is so important that it deserves an international year. So this was the great job, and uh, this is what uh, indeed happened. And in March 2012, uh, Morocco got the um, could convince other six countries, which are mentioned here, and draft, uh, uh, they co-signed this resolution, which was finally and definitely uh, approved in July 2012. So we have the International Year of Crystallography. Uh, so uh, I think it was absolutely needed uh, for all of you uh, to know that there is uh, all this work already done. It's not only something that was dec decided by one person. So this is a, a, a huge work behind. So again, we need to exploit this uh, opportunity. So. Um, this is uh, more or less what I have in my presentation, just give you an outline, uh, probably for some of these topics I will skip something and depending on the time, so I will see. Anyway, I will try to give you some ideas about uh, the objectives of the International Year of Crystallography, trying to be a little bit more specific about this. And uh, I will, of course, introduce you what are the main activities that we are trying to implement at the, at the moment we are planning. And, of course, we need the help of all crystallographers. Everybody should, um, should be involved and should feel part of this community and part of this organization. So I will show you what are the main activities. And, of course, finally, how to participate and how to be in contact with the general organization from the uh, IUCR in order to take part to this, uh, uh, to this event. So, objectives. What I have to say, of course, this is a celebration. Uh, this is the International Year of Crystallography. What we deserve is to celebrate our discipline. We are all proud of being crystallographers. If we are in this room attending a crystallography school, it's because we are proud of being crystallographers and we know that our role is fundamental for the developing of science in general. And I, and I just want to use one word, science, not uh, specifying chemistry or biology or any other discipline. This is fundamental for the developing of science. So. Uh, we are proud of this, and of course, everything starts because of the beauty of crystals. And uh, there are uh, many examples for, well, this is what attracts us. So uh, it's normal that we want to be crystallographers, because we love these images, and we are here, and the Islamic art and the Arabic art is so uh, plenty of symmetric objects which are so beautiful. So this is normal, that everything started from here, and you can find this in the history. If you go back to Theophrastus, it's 300 before Christ, so a long time ago, you already find uh, books mentioning crystals, and not only mentioning crystals as objects, but also the possibility of using crystals for specific activities. So what is the importance of crystals? They are so beauty, okay, beautiful, okay, but what is the applications that we can do with these crystals? This is already found in Theophrastus, in the Lapidibus. Uh, and if you go to the Romans, Plinius the Elder is a very famous crystallographer, and uh, in, his, uh, uh, in his book he says, uh, you can read this sentence, uh, he was attracted by these large transparent crystals of gypsum already in the Romans, and uh, the dehydrated form of calcium sulfate already knew what kind of applications and transformations you could do, and the crystal clarity inside. So, Already uh, we have this feeling of how beauty and how important and how fundamental for applications crystals can be. So 
uh, well, this is a monument to, <laughs> okay. I, I'm not going through details. I, I, this is not a traditional um, uh, a list of milestones in crystallography. I just want to point out uh, some, uh, some examples. But uh, uh, people who are not known probably as crystallographers, like Avicenna. Avicenna was a, a polymath, probably, and you all know uh, for, uh, as a scientist, but he was a crystallographer also because he was interested and was attracted by the crystals uh, and he was the person who rejected the alchemist theories and Agricola, of course, uh, who classified the minerals. So we have wonderful examples of uh, crystallographers in the history which are not the crystallographers that, of course, you know and you should know from your crystallographic courses. I just want to mention something different. And of course, we have a, a Catholic best. Crystallography do, don't, doesn't miss a thing. The, we want to have everything. And we also have a Catholic blessed Steno. Of course, you know Steno because of the law of constancy of interfacial angles. Um, so we also have this in our history. We cannot but be proud about this. And I'm not sure that in that picture, the Catholic Pope was praying because of crystallography. But you never know. Uh, <laughs> um, Kepler, you all know Kepler as an astronomer, but Kepler was, a, was also a crystallographer. You know this, uh, this book is uh, Strena de Seu de Nives Exangula. Strena in Latin means uh, a gift for the new year. Okay, so he decided to give this as a gift for the new year. And what is indeed? It's a book about the symmetry of snowflakes. He understood the, 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 the six-fold symmetry of snowflakes and wrote a book about this. And the, if you go inside in this book, look what you find. You find, you see the picture there, the small picture on your right, already crystal packing was in his mind. So it was already uh, the idea that an order, uh, ordered uh, atoms or objects should be uh, responsible for these uh, beautiful uh, objects. So this is already in Kepler, who is not known as a crystallographer, but this is what our history has. And uh, of course, this crystal packing then was then used by Robert Hooke for uh, trying to decipher uh, what is the shape of crystals uh, due for, uh, from. And uh, of course, I have to mention uh, French crystallographers, the father of crystallographers, are we, and of course, Romain de Lille, and uh, who uh, defined the law of rationality of crystallographic indices, thanks also to the work that Steno had already done. So, you see, uh, this is a beautiful history, and if we pass to other examples uh, of very famous scientists who are not famous as crystallographers, probably, Louis Pasteur, is a microbiologist, for example, for, for, I think for everybody, but he was a crystallographer and he was also interested in crystals. And when he, uh, uh, you know, he, he could uh, separate the two uh, enantiomorphs of, uh, of this compound of sodium ammonium pyrotartrate in this case, how could, uh, could he separate the two enantiomorphs? Because of symmetry, because he recognized that these two crystals are one mirror image of the other. So he could separate at the microscope because he could see the symmetry, he could see the morphology of crystal. So this is a very beautiful example of how crystallography can help in uh, resolving problems. So again, if we are at the um, International Year of Crystallography in, 12, in 2014, or anyway, in these, uh, these years, it's of course because we are celebrating what uh, changed dramatically all science, which is X-ray diffraction. So uh, 2014 is the uh, 100th anniversary of the Nobel Prize, which was awarded to Max von Laue uh, for discovery of the diffraction of X-ray by crystals. This is uh, the centenary that we have during the, uh, for, uh, during the International Year of Crystallography. But we don't have to forget that this is not a discovery by one man. This is not all uh, uh, from, from, from this work. There, is, there, there has been a huge work behind, and a lot of people should be mentioned, which I cannot because I want to talk about the year. Uh, but of course, I have to mention at least um, the two Braggs who defined the uh, diffraction law and who 
uh, were the first to solve a crystal structure using X-ray diffraction. So what we are actually celebrating during the International Year of Crystallography is the centenary of this work. Everything changed in science. I don't want to say that everything changed in crystallography because after this work, after uh, someone understood that using crystals and using a physical phenomenon, which is diffraction of X-rays, you could understand how atoms are positioned in matter. So you know that atoms are bound watch, uh, one to the other in a specific way. Uh, you, you know that a molecule has a specific form. You can uh, interpret uh, the, the, the properties of matter starting from the position of atoms. So understanding why this compound has a specific property and also uh, trying to uh, foresee what can be the properties of a special compound because you, you know how the atoms are connected one to, uh, one to the other. So this is a, a really a dramatic change for science. And this is what we are celebrating with our International Year of Crystallography. I also want to mention that 2014 is the 15th anniversary of the Nobel Prize awarded to Dorothy Hodgkin for a number of studies and the solution of a number of uh, biochemical substances by X-ray diffraction, so vitamin B12, penicillin, I don't know how many we can mention. So this is another special anniversary that we have uh, in 2014. But uh, crystallography is still uh, a discipline which is alive so you know that many Nobel Prizes uh, are, uh, have been given to crystallographers and if you also look to the very recent Nobel Prizes, you see that a lot of them are for crystallography. So you see, I just put uh, 2009, uh, the Nobel Prize to Ramakrishnan, Steitz and Yonat for studies on the structure and function of the ribosome. Uh, 2011, quasi-crystals, so I think this is what uh, you should like at most uh, here, uh, so to Dan Shekman, and if you go up to 2012, we have the Nobel Prize to Lef uh, Lefkowitz and Kobilka uh, for studies of G-protein coupled receptors. So again, this is a, a, a crystallographic work. By the way, Kobilka will be part of the opening ceremony of the International Year of Crystallography at UNESCO in Paris in January. So he, will, he is invited to give a talk uh, during the opening ceremony. And also the latest uh, Nobel Prize in Chemistry is uh, somewhere related to crystallography, but I haven't time to show it here. So, okay. So, this is just to give you an idea of how important, but you already know, but uh, using different words, how important it is to um, celebrate crystallography. But it's not only, and it is not absolutely the first thing. If the International Year of Crystallography was just a celebration, I think I would not be interested at all. Uh, because crystal, the International Year of Crystallography is a starting point, is not a celebration of what we have done in the last 100 years, but it's a starting point for what we want to do in the next 100 years. This is how I intend the International Year of Crystallography. So the aim is dissemination of crystallography, increasing awareness, as I already said in the beginning. So increasing the public awareness of the fundamental role of crystallography, of the universality of science, of the pervasive presence of crystallography in everyday life, and promote education in order to inspire the youngsters. So this can be an important task for all of us, for all of, of, of us crystallographers. This is what we should do during this year in order to increase uh, the number of persons involved in the community and try to uh, speed up the process of development crystallography and then of science. This is our, our task this year. We cannot miss this, uh, this opportunity. And, uh, uh, and um, talking about this, I just want to um, say a few words about the International Union of Crystallography because the International Union of Crystallography was founded uh, just for these reasons, in order to be a sort of depository of the crystallographic knowledge. So the International Union of Crystallography was founded in, 47, uh, in, 40, in 1947, and this is a picture of the first um, Congress and General Assembly of the IUCR, uh, which was held in Harvard, USA, in 1948. 
The International Union of Crystallography was founded um, mostly for disseminating crystallography and of course how through the journals. So uh, you have uh, here the first example of, uh, this is the first article published in the Acta Crystallographica journal. I think that you all know all the journals of the, uh, of the International Union of Crystallography. The first journal was from a scientist from Spain and uh, it's very interesting to read the sentence by Paul Ewald, uh, which is there, I don't know if it's large enough, but already uh, Ewald, in 1948, was saying that uh, um, uh, crystallography borders physics, chemistry, biology, mineralogy, technology, also mathematics, but it's it is distinguished by being concerned with the methods and results of investigating and uh, of investigating the arrangement of atoms in matter. There is no specific uh, relation with the perfectly ordered crystal. So already 1948, he was saying, what I'm interested in is how atoms are connected in matter, whatever matter it is. What we have in hand is a, a very powerful tool for, study crystal, for studying crystals. This is what the Braggs and von Laue gave to us. But now crystallography is much more than this. We are able to study quasi crystals, which were not possible at, the, at that time. But it was already in the definition of Ewald. We can study liquid crystals, we can study disordered materials through the um, total scattering or many other spectroscopic methods. One will be during the International Year of Crystallography in 2014 in Montreal, and the next one in 2017 will be in Hyderabad in India, right? Okay, so this is to tell that there is, this is a very active community of crystallographers and being part of a community doesn't mean just reading what is done on the website, but means participate in the activities of your local association, which then can, give, can have emphasis to uh, the IUCR. Uh, what are the aims of the IUCR? First of all, promote international cooperation in crystallography. So this is one of the most important things, the putting together nations, putting together scientists from different countries with different expertise, with different experiences in order to uh, develop crystallography more efficiently. Uh, sorry, too much. Uh, contribute to the advancement of crystallography in all its aspects including related topics concerning the non-crystalline state. Again, crystallography is not a static discipline, it's something which is developing, and the IUCR is also managing all the aspects concerning with this. Promote international publication of crystallographic research. As I said, he's a publisher of eight journals, and this IUCRJ is the new publication which will be launched next year and form a focus for the relations of crystallography to all other sciences. So how crystallography connects biology with mineralogy and chemistry and physics and mathematics and all the disciplines. And finally, facilitate standardization of methods using nomenclatures and symbols, and I think that later on today uh, you have a lecture about uh, international tables, uh, which is something that the IUCR manages, so uh, that Meyer will, uh, will give you uh, more hints about this. So, uh, this map shows you in red the countries which at the moment adhere to the International Union Crystallography. As you see, there are some regions which are white, and uh, this is, of course, one of the aims of the International Crystallography, to try to fill in this map and having the more countries as possible uh, adhering to the International Union of Crystallography. This is not because uh, it's a matter of collecting things. It's because uh, being part of the uh, IUCR being, means being part of the, of the community uh, and uh, having access to, to knowledge of crystallography, to, to the journal, to having, being part of that union which um, uh, is a depository of the culture of crystallography. So it means being part of a community, uh, sharing the same interests and the same efforts. So this is, of course, what we want to do uh, during the International Year of Crystallography, and I hope that uh, some more countries will, will be part of the Union. So, uh, I said celebrate, I say disseminate crystallography, but I also want to say again that the International Year of Crystallography is a starting point. So what we want to do is innovation. 
is not celebration only, but is on also innovation. So the questions that we must, uh, uh, we must do ourselves, so during the school, this is what uh, you should ask yourself. What, what do we expect from the second century of modern crystallography? We are celebrating the end of the first century, which means that we are starting the second. What do you expect from crystallography in the second century? This is what you have to ask yourself. What are the main challenges and the frontiers of crystallography? So what are the topics we have to focus on? because of the interest of our community, of the society. So, of course, there are many. You can think at advanced materials. You can think at drug design, of developing new medicines. You can think at developing methods, of de developing new instrumentation, like the new free electron laser, which now allows studies of molecules in a very different way. So, there are many different uh, subjects, many different topics where you can focus on but it is important to think what are the challenges for the future. So this is what the International Year wants to do. And of course, this is possible by fostering collaborations. We need to, to work together. We need to, to consider ourselves part of a community. We have, uh, the, and this is what the UCR will try to do, promote and sustain initiatives. Just think at this school. This is perfectly, exactly what the IUCR uh, needs, and so the community needs for the International Year of Crystallography. Events like these means, uh, as I can see, this room is full. It's so beautiful to be here, and I know many people from different countries. So this is a great opportunity for all of you to start collaboration, to be in contact with other young scientists from other countries. So, this is exactly what we want to do, and events like these are a perfect example of what the International Year of Crystallography is trying to be for, uh, for next year. And so all this to inspire, in particular, young people and uh, give them uh, opportunity to think about what to do in the next century for crystallography and science in general. Okay, um, you can find uh, um, some general information about what I've discussed so far about the International Year of Crystallography on this document, which is not updated for what concerns the date, but it's, uh, of course, uh, nothing to be changed for what concerns the, uh, the topics, the main topics. So you can find this on the website of the International Year of Crystallography, which is reported there. It's available in English, French, and thank you also in Arabic. <laughs> Um, so you can download it for, uh, from the website, uh, and it's a uh, PDF, uh, easily downloadable. Okay, so what's going on? What's going on for the International Year of Crystallography? What are the activities that the IUCR, together with UNESCO, and uh, most of all, together with all the national associations, are uh, planning for next year? Uh, this list is not comprehensive. It cannot be comprehensive because the number of events uh, which are uh, going to be planned in, uh, uh, worldwide is really, really long, and it's really, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to see what, uh, what's happening all over the world. But I just want to mention something. We are going to have an opening ceremony, of course. We are going to have special projects like the Open Labs, the summit meetings, I'm going to describe you uh, a little bit more. There will be a worldwide crystal growing competition for school children. So in order to start some activity, for them, there will be a photo contest, so you, if you already have some good pictures about crystallography in the real world, just uh, keep it uh, available because in one week or so this photo contest will be open and you can have a chance to go to Montreal for the IUCR Congress. Um, there will be new publications. There are a number of activities and national and regional uh, events which I cannot describe here, but that you can find on the website. I want to start uh, showing you what's this? Um, showing you the activities on a map. So the main activities that the IUCR, together with UNESCO, are organizing, I try to put everything on, a, uh, on, on the map of the world. So everything will start in Paris at the UNESCO headquarters, uh, where the opening ceremony will be held on the 20th and 21st of January. So everybody is, of course, invited uh, to participate. 
And uh, this will be the first opportunity for all of us to, uh, in particular, to convince the governments because uh, this is an event open uh, to the ambassadors to the go uh, of, uh, from all the governments to convince them that it is important to invest in crystallography. So this is the opportunity for us to deliver a, a specific message, a very precise message about the importance of crystallography and the importance of investing in crystallography for the development of science. Then another uh, project is what we call the Open Lab. You see many different label pins which drop down in the map, uh, so you can see that there are many different locations. This is at the moment just a preliminary map, and uh, in this case what we are going to implement is a series of operational laboratory with a diffractometer or with some instrumentation for doing some crystallographic research, in particular in countries where this is not very well developed, but not only, only in countries where, uh, uh, also in countries where crystallography is already developed, it can be an opportunity to um, um, have some specific workshops and inviting students from neighboring countries. The, all these laboratories should not be uh, attended only by students from the country hosting the lab, but in particular for students coming from neighboring countries in order to start cooperation among the countries. So there are a number of possibilities. Also uh, Morocco is uh, indicated here and there are some projects, so we will discuss about this in these days, I hope. And uh, you see many different uh, uh, locations in uh, Latin America, in Africa, in Southeast Europe, in Southeast Asia. And also there are a number of uh, uh, possibilities to have workshops in the factories of diffractometer manufacturers. So you see that we have a collaboration for this project with Agilent, Booker, Panalytical, Stoe. Also Dactaris has been uh, added, but uh, it was too recent. I, haven't, uh, I couldn't find the time to add the logo uh, yesterday. So uh, this is a partnership uh, bet among UNESCO, the IUCR, and the companies. And the companies are also opening the factories to host workshops. So it's also a, 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 a kind of workshop for job opportunities because it's not only basic crystallography, but it also it is also something about uh, maintenance of instruments, how uh, instruments are built, what is the science behind. So it can be a very nice project. I will tell you more. Um, the other main project is what we call a summit meetings. Summit meetings are um, in, well.